The mean of a data set is also known as the average of the data set. This can be computed by dividing the sum of the data items by the number of the items. The notation here represents the sum of all data items and the n here represents the number of items. Let's consider the following example and apply the principle that we have just learned. Are inventors born or made? It would be nice to think we could all be great inventors, but history says otherwise. Based on a sample of adults in 10 selected countries shows wide agreement that inventiveness is a quality that can be learned. Find the percentage of adults in the 10 countries who agree that inventiveness can be learned. So these are the selected countries. In Singapore and in Russia, 84% says that inventiveness can be learned. To find the mean, we will just add all the percents for the countries and divide it by 10. Adding all the percents in the countries, this represents the data from each country and divided by 10, we get 799 divided by 10, and that is equal to 79.9. 79.9 percent is the mean. If the data is organized using a frequency distribution, this is the formula that we're going to use to compute for the mean. So when does this happen? This happened when data values occur more than once. Then a table is then used to organize the data. F here represents the frequency of that data value. X is the data value. And the summation here, meaning you're just going to sum up the product of the data value and the frequency of that data value. And divide it by N, where N represents the total frequency of the distribution. This is an example of a frequency distribution table. The column here are the different data values, and these are the frequencies. When you say frequency, that's the number of times that data value appeared. For instance, the 2 appears 3 times. And for instance, this 5 here, it appears 18 times. This table here shows the student's responses to the question, how stressed have you felt in the last two and a half weeks on a scale of 0 to 10, with 0 being not stressed at all and 10 being as stressed as possible. We will refer to this frequency distribution table to find the mean of the stress level ratings. The first column represents the stress rating. We have 0 to 10. F is the frequency. This is the number of times this rating appeared on the table. So for instance, 7 is a stress rating and 31 students responded 7. To get the mean, we will first find the product of the stress rating and the frequency. So we will find the product of X and F first. Multiply this with that, multiplying the first column to the second column, you get all the values here. So 10 times 14 is equal to 140. 9 times 15 is equal to 135. 8 times 26 is equal to 208, and so on. To find the mean, after you get the product, sum up everything here. Add all the values here, and then divide it by the total frequency divided by the sum of numbers on this column here. So therefore, the mean is equal to 975 divided by 151, and that is approximately equal to 6.46. Now let's define median. The median is the data item in the middle of each set of ranked or ordered data. For example, Find the median for each of the following groups of data. 
The first step is to arrange the data items in order from smallest to largest. We have 84, 88, 90, 95, and 98. Next is to determine the number of data items in the list. If we count the number of data items, we have 5, and that is odd. If the number of data items on the list is odd, then the median is the middle number. In this case, the middle number is 90. Therefore, 90 is the median for this data here. Now, another example. Find the median of the group of data here. The first step is to arrange the data set from smallest to largest. We'll start with 7, followed by 13, and then 15, and then 25, 28, followed by 34, 47, then 59, 68, and 74. Next is to count the number of data items in the list. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We have 10 items in the list and that is even. Therefore, the median is the mean of the two middle numbers. The two middle numbers are the numbers 28 and 34. The median is the average of these two numbers. It is the number between the two numbers here. To get the average of the two numbers, add the two numbers and divide up by 2. 28 plus 34 divided by 2 is equal to 62 divided by 2, which is equal to 31. So an alternative way to find the median for the data set is to use the position formula. The formula for the median will then be n plus 1 divided by 2, where n is the number of items in the data set. For example, we have the numbers of letters in the nine longest words in the English language. This data is arranged from smallest to largest. Let's count the number of items in the data. We have two, four, six, eight, nine. Since the data is already arranged from smallest to largest, let's now use the position formula of nine data items plus 1, that gives us 10, divided by 2 is equal to 5. Therefore, the median is the number in the fifth position. So in the fifth position, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it is 28. So therefore, the median is 28. The position formula is very useful, especially when dealing with group data sets. We are given the frequency distribution for the stress level rating in the previous exercise. Suppose that we want to find the median stress level rating. We are going to use the position formula. Since we know that there are 151 data items, that's a sum for this column here. That's the total number of frequencies. So n is equal to 151. Now using the position formula, we have 151 plus 1 divided by 2. That gives us 152 divided by 2, which is equal to 76. So therefore, the 76th position is the median for the data to locate the median stress level rating, we just have to count down the frequency column. We have 2 here. When we count down, we already have 2. Plus 1, we have 3. And then plus 3, we have 6. And then plus 12, we then have 18. Plus 16, we have 34. And then plus 18, we have 52. Plus 13, we have 65. And then from there, you just have to count 65 because you have 31 and that is already more than 76, correct? After 65 here, just keep on counting till you reach the 76th data item. Well, you know that that is in this group here. So therefore, the 76th data item is 7.
take note that when you are using the position formula, you still have to arrange your data set, arrange it from smallest to largest, or you can do largest to smallest. But by convention, we always use smallest to largest. Let's compare the mean and the median. Let's take a look at the example. Five employees in a manufacturing plant earn salaries of 19,700, 20,400, 21,500, 22,600, and 23,600 annually. The section manager has an annual salary of 95,000 per year. Find the median annual salary for the six people. To find the median, the first step is to arrange the salaries in order from smallest to largest. So we'll start with 19,700 followed by 20,400, 21,500, 22,600, 23,000, and then 95,000. Note that there are even number of data items. In this case, we have six data entries. So therefore, the median is the average of the two middle items. The two middle items are 21,500 and 22,600. So the median is just the average of these two. 21,500 plus 22,600 divided by two. That is equal to 44,100 divided by two, which is equal to 22,050. Therefore, the median salary is $22,050. Next, let's compute the mean annual salary for the six people. To find the mean annual salary, we are just going to add all the annual salaries for the six people and then divide up by six. So we get 202,200 divided by six is equal to 33,700. If you compare that to the median salary, the mean salary is greater than the median salary. And the reason for that is because we have an outlier here. We have a very big salary here, 95,000, and that affects the mean. But for the median, this salary here does not affect the median salary. Let's discuss the mode. The mode is the data value that occurs most often in a data set. If more than one data value has the highest frequency, then each of these data values is a mode. If there is no data value that occurs most often, then the data set has no mode. For example, find a mode for the following groups of data. We have 7, 2, 4, 7, 8, 10. If you look at the numbers here, notice that 7 here appears twice. Therefore, the mode for this data set is 7. For the mid-range, we could think of the mid-range as the average of the highest and the lowest data values. This one can be found by adding the lowest and the highest data values and dividing the sum by 2. For example, Newsweek's magazine examined factors that affect women's lives, including justice, health, education, economics, and politics. Using these five factors, the magazine graded each of 165 countries on a scale from 0 to 100. The 12 best places to be a woman and the 12 worst places to be a woman are shown below. Find the mid-range among the 12 best countries to be a woman. In this table here, we can see the top 12 best places to be a woman. On this side, this is the top 12 places to be the worst places to be a woman. To find the mid-range of the 12 best countries to be a woman, you refer to this table here, add the lowest score and the highest score, which is 100, and then divide that by 2. 
87.2 plus 100 divided by 2 is equal to 187.2 divided by 2, then that is equal to 93.6.